Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I'm making a birthday card using some beautiful Graphic 45 paper. I pulled out this Sizzix Framelits die. It's the scallop circles, and they have eight different size circles. I'm using the four smallest, and I did pull out this um, by the sea Graphic 45, but I don't end up using that. I do use the Cityscape one in black, which is beautiful. I'm taking some craft cardstock by Nina, cutting it to four and a quarter, leaving it at 11 inches. And I'm also cutting the second piece to five and a half. That'll be my card front. So I'm taking my 11 inch, scoring it at five and a half, and that will give me a standard A2 size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to set that aside and use my card front to work on. I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do with this, so that's why I wanted a card front to work on. I did know that I want this as a mat for the front of my card, so I'm cutting it to the same size as my card, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm cutting out this next piece. I'm going to use it um, as well on my card. So that fits my card front perfectly. And I'm going to grab some scotch tape. I put it on my hand to get some of the stickiness off because I don't want it to stick too much and rip my paper once I take my dies off. And I'm just setting the smaller, I'm, I'm using two dies that um, fit within each other and I'm using the smaller ones now to cut out my circles. So I'm cutting a, a medium size and then a smaller size and I need to run that smaller size up at the top as well. So I left the tape on and just moved my die, running it through my Sizzix Big Shot. And by using the next size up, the larger one, I'm going to cut frames out for those circle dies. So that's where I thought this paper would come in, but I decided against it. And now I'm looking at my glitzy glitter cardstock stack from DCWV and I pulled out this beautiful, it's like a champagne color glitter paper. And at that point, that's when I decided to use the back side of the paper to show through my scallop dies, which I'll show you here in a moment. So I'm just kind of lining up my dies, again, using the um, inside piece to give myself a frame and I need to cut three frames. So I run these through a few times because it is glitter paper, so it is a little bit thicker. And now I will run that third die through to get myself a, another frame. And I love how beautifully these Sizzix framelits cut out. So I'm just kind of placing them on my card to see if I'm happy with it. And I pulled out a piece of vellum. I'll show you up close. It has a very thin pin striping on it. It is so pretty. I thought that would look nice to go behind it to just kind of soften that pattern paper in the back. So after I looked at it, I decided I did want to use that. So I'm going to cut that down to four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I'm going to adhere down my layers using some Angel Craft double-sided tape. That layer wasn't quite as large as my card base, but it didn't matter. You won't see it. And now I'm using that die cut piece to see where I can place the tape for my vellum because you don't want to put, put it behind where the die cuts show through because you will see the tape. So now I'm going to adhere my glitter cardstock to it, just using some Scotch Quick Dry. I'm lining up where I want the scallops and then adding it down. Using an acrylic block to hold it in place while it dries. It dries very quickly. And I purposely wanted these dies to go off the edges on 
the smaller ones. I'm using some tweezer B tweezers to help hold it in place when I was adding my glue. Those are really handy. Now I'm just cutting off the parts that stick over the sides. I pulled out a couple stamps, a script stamp that says happy birthday and that fits perfectly behind that large die. I'm just kind of marking it with a pencil to make sure that I stay within that spot for when I stamp it. I pulled out some VersaFine Black Onyx ink and I've never used this stamp before so I'm stamping it off a couple times on some scratch paper just to condition the stamp. And I did use my stamp -a majig in case I didn't get a good enough um, impression, I could hurry up and redo it again. And then at the end I decided to heat emboss it. So you want to heat up your, your heat tool for a few minutes before taking it to vellum and it'll help eliminate some of the the warping that you will tend to get with vellum. So now I'm adding another stamp set from a Joy Claire stamp and it says sending you love. I have the stamp that says sending you and then I have a stamp that says love you so I will just mask off the you in love you. So the first thing I'm stamping is sending you and I will heat emboss that as well with just using clear embossing powder. And now I'm using the stamp that says love you. I'll use a little bit of tape. I could cut the stamp, but I really didn't want to. It's easy to mask it off. So I'm just using some scotch tape, inking it up, removing the tape, and then stamping it down. And then I will add my clear embossing powder and heat that as well. And here I show you a little bit closer of what that looks like. Cute little tiny font. And then I wanted to add something in that third die cut area, so I'm adding a little heart. And again, this, I've never used that heart, so I will stamp that off on some scratch paper first, or scrap paper first. And I heat emboss that as well. So I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere it down. I added my Angel Craft Tape, and around those little tiny edges, I'm adding some Scotch Quick Dry. I want to make sure that it's completely adhered down. I'm showing you here that I took off about an eighth inch from the top and the side because I decided I wanted to put some of that same glitter paper around the end, which I'll do here in a moment. And using this Marianne Creatables die, it's the um, Rosebuds and Leaves die, and I'm pulling out this little curling tool from my Heartfelt Creations Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit and just rolling it around to get a rolled rose. Super quick, super easy to do. And as you can see, I cut that out from the same glitter cardstock. I'm just holding that there for a minute. I will add some hot glue and press it down. They take minutes to make. I love these little rolled flowers, adding them to projects. You'll see me use this die a lot. I've been using it a lot lately. So I'm just kind of holding it in place, and then I let it kind of loosen up a little and just hold it there for a minute while my hot glue dries, and I'm holding it down in the middle there with that curling tool. And look how pretty that looks, and it took me probably two minutes to do. So I make another one off camera as well, and you can make them a little bit larger. The die set comes with a larger rolled rose, but for this project, I just use the smaller one. It also comes with two leaves as well. I'll make sure to have a link in um, the description box and Cut It Home's blog for that die along with all the other products that I used. So here's where I'm adding my glitter around the edges. I'm just making sure a little bit of it peeks out and that way it ties it in. And it looks like I put a whole piece behind it, but this way I'm able to save some of that glitter paper just by using little strips. So I'm cutting off the excess, and now I'm going to add that to my card front. I made sure my card, my opening was the correct way. Here I'm showing some Joy Crafts dies, and these are pretty intricate leaves. 
um, that I cut out. So I wanted to show you, I, I finally got a precision base plate from Sizzix. And let me just say, it is so worth having. I don't know why I waited so long to order one, but um, normally I would have to use a shim with them or other things. I did not have to do that. I'm showing you here on graphic 45 paper because you know how thick graphic 45 paper is. And if you don't know, it's a very thick cardstock. So with that precision base plate, I ran it through and they just popped right out of the die. I could not believe it. I didn't have to worry about a shim. I didn't have to worry about running it through several times. So if you have not used one of these, it is so worth it for your intricate dies. Look how easy those popped out. So I cut out several of those. I wasn't sure how many I wanted to use for my card. And now I'm just going to place them down and I do cut them because they were just a little too large for what I wanted. And once I was happy, I added a little bit of hot glue and laid those down. I added my two rolled roses. And then I added in a few open roses from Wild Orchid Crafts. I love mixing the two, the paper flowers along with these mulberry flowers. And again, just adding a couple more leaves that I cut apart as well. I think this would be really pretty. I plan on doing a wedding card similar to this. I think this would be a really pretty wedding card um, with that gold glitter paper. Now I'm taking my hot glue gun to the flowers. Just it gets rid of any hot glue strings that are hanging around. I pulled out some little pearls, round pearls, and I'm adding those inside my little rolled roses. Again, getting rid of any hot glue strings. There you can see up close, they turned out really pretty. And now to finish it off, I add a few pearls. I'm using a little bit of glossy accents just to make sure that they will not move once they're adhered down. And that's all there was to it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I appreciate you stopping by and check out Cut It Home's blog. I'll have all the links in the description box. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.